I've always been interested in how people's railways fit into their gardens. I wondered if you might be interested in how mine fits into my garden. Here's my back garden along the back of the house, uh, lean to, and also the conservatory, which is also where I have my workshop. And now down the side of the house, you can see the garage at the back, um, where I also store my rolling stock. And you can see the railway is built into the hedge on timber supports. Walking down the garden now, we come to Beeston Market Station. The train standing there, just departing, hauled by 240 Barclay Locomotive No. 2. It passes where the engine shed is situated. It's not there at the moment because I wanted to show off the rolling stock, the locomotives. And we pass the copper mine. Uh, this is the justification for my railway. Copper was mined in the Peckforton Hills and in my imaginary history the railway was built to serve them. Going along the hedge now, down the side of the garden, passing the boundary fence, and then coming to the hidden junction, a little bit more of that later, uh, that leads across the swing bridge, and now down behind the sheds. It emerges from behind the sheds, passing under an overbridge, and crossing uh, a junction, again a little bit more about that later, to pass along by the hedge at the back of the garden on a sandstone rockery. There's the lower track. Uh, my railway is like a sort of looped figure of eight. We now come into Beeston Castle Station. Beeston Castle does exist on a promontory and I imagined that there would be a station so that tourists be able to go and visit the castle. I have got a sort of representation of the castle at the back there but it's a bit more of a ruin than the real castle is. Anyway, the train pulls out of the station, crosses over the lower line and now descends on a 1 in 40 gradient. Passing the River Gowie, which is a little stream that runs down by the railway and underneath it there. And now coming round on a low sandstone rock wall and coming into Peckforton Station. Now Peckforton uh, in my imaginary history is where there's a timber yard and a source of traffic on the railway. The train now pulling out of Peckforton station crossing over a viaduct which is still being constructed. The viaduct wouldn't have really existed on the railway uh, but I had to put something to cross the path leading to the patio. Crossing the mill junction there's uh, little bridge over the river going to the water mill, which did exist near Bukley. Now towards the far end of the garden, swinging round by Bickerton station, again a little bit more of that later, past under the upper line and beneath Beeston Castle, it now has a 1 in 40 climb back up to the junction we saw earlier. Where it takes the upper line, this time in the opposite direction, to pass once more behind the sheds. It emerges and takes the hidden junction that we saw earlier to cross over the swing bridge. Again, there wouldn't have really been a swing bridge on the Peckforton Railway, but I had to find a way of crossing the gap to get to the sheds. The swing bridge is based on the original one at Southwall. Pulls into Bukley Station. There would have been uh, soft fruit um, grown around Bukley, and the in the summer months the closed vans take the soft fruit up the line 
to the main railway interchange at Beeston Market. Pulling out of Bukley, we pass by the Copper Mine Junction that leads bound round the back of the sheds to the Copper Mine that we saw earlier. Now down the 1 in 40 slope, passing over the junction, the link to the upper line. And then passing Beeston Castle Station once more, just above it, to pass beneath the upper line. And then pulling into Bickerton Station, which is the other terminus. Yeah, sorry about the abrupt stop at the end here, but uh, difficult to hold the camera and operate the controller at the same time. So that's it.